Hello, and welcome back. Second time around, uh, yeah, it wasn't recording again. My fault. Apologies for the Titan um, video. My computer was not happy at the time. I think it's okay today. Um, okay, this is a tutorial based research channel, um, which hopefully I can show you in the simplest way through the videos and the tutorials I've done how you can find this stuff for yourself. It's the only way to do it, it's the only way to confirm things um, to the extent of what is going on in the photographs. Can't say anything else, this is purely what I'm finding in the photographs. Okay, did I show you that? Okay, yeah, this is it, under the mask. Um, I've just done half an hour doing this. Um, so, I've confused myself again. We're looking at Pluto today. Yes, Pluto. Um, here's a little bit of information about the picture. Um, and uh, the image on, uh, is the Ralph Multispectral uh, Visual Imaging Camera. I don't know how that takes the, uh, the pictures and stuff yet, but this is quite a decent image. You can see it's nice and large, um, and that's a logo. I always li I like the logos, so um, there we go. Pause it, have a read. Um, always helps to know a little bit about what you're looking at. Okay, right. So here we go. Oh yeah, just out of, um, see this uh, blue image up here, it's basically this area, that area there, that we're going to be looking at a bit closer. That's interesting. I'm going to be talking about some of the makeup of the images as well, um, which I was talking about a fair bit in the, the Titan stuff. Um, with the pre-editing from their end. Um, okay. And that's a very low quality image, but very interesting. Okay, this is with um, the pre, pre I've, I've actually had a, a little bit of a look at this. Um, so let's go where I started. It isn't actually that massive and it pixelates around I think it's about 500 percent I'm not sure pixelating now 300 percent but it's cool it's a decent enough image and I'm keeping them a little bit lower while I'm making the videos um because the computer doesn't like it basically right so Okay, so the lighter areas is where I've actually done some work on. That's what I just did a minute ago. That was quite interesting. Um, so let's have a, a little look. So the, the flamboyant colors and stuff shall we say this is um from the from the it's just what the tools do um that's why i'm a little bit reluctant to use color i mean it, do, it has been working but um it can get a bit funky and some images uh, are much better in black and white so i'll be doing some zooming in and out you know, people that use magnifying glasses to to view this stuff um, and I'll be doing some research as well it helps you focus on it and understand where I'm coming from and that it's not um, any manipulation from from my end so let's start somewhere where I haven't been which looks quite interesting
What we on? What we on? We on three five D. Okay. Basically, this tool is the, the initial one that I use, which is uh, highlights in the dodge setting. The dodge setting makes whatever tone you choose here lighter. So there's some stuff I'm going to show you in a bit. And I'm, I always talk about working in the dark areas or the shadows um, where there can actually be a lot more revealing information oh let's do this a little bit of a uh, background ambience um, okay let's see I might um right, I'm just gonna do that oh it's not it does matter just trying to get it onto full screen I've been using programs like this for years, but I'm still a complete dimwit when it comes to basic computer stuff. Just gonna bump that up a bit. So you can see it's pulling in from quite a weird colour. Rather a nice colour actually. It's like the old verdigris. Just done some um, a test on. Uh, it's actually a mummy mask, like a reproduction thing to hang on the hang on the wall um, with patine, patina, bronze, metal powder. Rather, rather cool looking. I love these colours. Anyway, right. So if, if you're new, um, I've been talking about stuff that is reoccurring or familiar, uh, familiar shapes and things, which I think... Um, here on ev everything that I've done so far and I've, I refer to them as a uh, they're like platforms they're either square or triangle or diagonal with what looks like a, a tower or a spire or a, a dome on top so I'll try and point, point them out there, just like this one there, so you can see the stuff appearing. see the perspective element so I'm presuming with this let's have a little closer look to explain I hope you can hear me I'm not um, talking too quiet I think I'm close enough to the microphone so that would be the top area you see it comes down 
and this would be the front. It's like looking down on the on the top of a house, looking at the roof, but you can see the front as well, or the side. There's another something sticking out the top. But it might not be, see? I think that's probably going up again. this area here, what you can do, I've had a burn mid-tones, back to dodge, highlights, let's make that a bit smaller, you don't continually want to go over the light area because they'll just get so light you won't be able to see anything so it's keeping a nice and yes of course it, it is up to me but I'm just taking it to a stage where you can hopefully see better what is going on You hear my uh, stylus scribbling away. That'll probably break on me soon. It has little nib which you replace. And I've worn a couple of those out already. Doing that to show you, show you the hidden things. There we go. So from this, you could pretty much work out that if this is like this, then I'm presuming this is like. This. And if you have watched the videos, then you'll know what I'm talking about. That tends to be the case that incredibly, I still have problems getting my head around it. That these moons and planets are absolutely covered in what we would, what I call, and other people call there's no other way to, to to label it really apart from structural anomalies manufactured built by someone and we're not meant to see them And the longer I go, I've been doing this stuff for a few years now, but the longer the longer I do it, the more interested I get in how because you're you're back editing this stuff to pull out the the information and how they do it. And is it their own software that does it automatically? Um, I don't know. I imagine a lot of this is done by done by hand um, and if it is that means someone is doing it so that makes you think is it just the wage packet that keeps your mouth shut
I don't know. Is it automated? Could be a long one, guys. Try not to make well. They're as long as they're going to be. So you can see where I've moved around hit different areas. Let me know if this is a good... It's difficult to say though because every image is, is different. Um, but more important than anything I want the viewer to be able to see What is going on? So you need to let me know. Does that run all the way through? Have a look there. So when you're initially working on a dark area, you can just zap over it just to pop some of the highlights. So you can see at this area here, I just zap over that. It just gives you a good start. In. And remember these these pens, the stylus, they're, they're pressure sensitive, so if you remember that then I'm hardly touching with that so I can get some smaller areas rather than that the radius of the brush you can see there or the harder I press it will fill that that area so every time I release the The stylus it will go over with the the exposure setting again so you get good control over the image what is that See the areas that I've moved to. I wish that was a lot smoother. I think I mentioned before, I might look at it, um, I've got a open source editing program, it's called Shotcut, I think, and what I might do is uh, do it on Ganymede, it was the first one that I started, try and finish a little bit more of that, and then just do a nice like I think it's uh, is it alien hunter site and they just 
play some tunes and just move around the image. And you can, you know, pan in and out. Uh, excuse me. Uh, phone's doing weird things. So this is the area I started in. So this is all fresh, this is all new, I don't know what we will be seeing. Which way it will be up here, yeah, being obviously up, I think it must be the southern hemisphere. I want to know how they do this. Very, uh, very clever. Or it might be so simple, it's, uh, it's stupid. You know, and it, 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 it's that old saying, isn't it, which they've been using for a very long time, you know, if you want to hide anything, then you hide it in plain sight. Disinformation confused the whole thing. So it's a point of just looking around. If I flit around the screen, I'm just following where my eye is going. And the more you do this, the more you get used to it. And then it's just a case of filling in the gaps. And the problem I have, I find that it tends to be the whole flipping images. Um, And you're constantly finding what you, what you wouldn't expect. You can just see this stuff appearing. And the good thing with these tools as well is because you're only working on one pixel. And you've got three different levels to choose from here. Shadows, midtones, highlights. If you work on it enough, this sort of hazy blurriness will because it's uh, it's sort of condensing it like I say it just goes on and on and on There we have it, you are now seeing 
very few people have seen before. How you interpret it is there are different different thing. I'm not going to do too much in this rig because it's so, so heavy. Take a huge amount of work. Think of the jerkiness of the me moving around the image as a an exercise in continually refocusing. the red. Let's have a look to see what it so look at all this stuff here. Only by doing this that you'll start noticing all the other stuff surrounding it. Okay, so I'm going to try the shadows on that. Remember to take that down because it's quite very strong. See, that's changing the colour of the red as well. Back to the dodge. So if you are interested and you do know anyone that uses uh, Photoshop or GIMP, you could ask them, you know, is this, are these simple tools, is it very difficult? Um, if they say yes, then don't bother getting their advice, because it isn't. You need to learn to open the file, work on the file, minimal tools, which I've shown you, and um, go through the tutorials for the resizing, and save the image. Simple as that. God knows what it is, but you can see that there's a lot going on there that needs looking at. Her.
What's that? Can you see? So these areas you need large the difference in the, the uh, contrast uh, colours rather black and white would work good. No, even though you can't tell what it is, that's enough for me to ask big questions. Dear researcher or scientist, can you tell me what this is? Have you even seen it before? Do your glasses work? I'm going to have to get some new glasses soon because my eyes are the size of goldfish bowls from doing this. Any joke? And this is the area of the this blue image up here. Um, That we'll be looking at. See, and in the other image, I'll show you that why why this doesn't look right to me. I don't know if you ever ever seen any artwork where. The um, the background is painted last. I like I like the look of it. Uh, that sort of especially comic art. Um, but you can tell that it's been painted on last. And see how that just sort of vanishes oh, it's that All this stuff. Oh, I'm just going to move through the image doing this. Does that look like the top and the sides here? I want to give you an idea of the angles and what we can see.
I didn't read anything in regards to what the surface of Pluto is like. It may, there may be something in those bits that I've shown you. But it's important to, uh, important to know. I should know more than anyone really, but I'd past uh, worrying about that because it's always wrong. So you can see it's just, what's that? I mean, is that? Everywhere. And what's everywhere? Well, stuff that doesn't look naturally geological, which falls in line with the description they give you of the planet. He says, just saying, he doesn't know what the surface of Pluto is like, but I can guarantee you it's not, won't describe this. Okay. There's a huge amount to look at on this. I know there's some stuff over here, so let me show you. You probably have to bend your head with this one. Um, I'm not going to attempt to flip the flip the screen. Because my computer will probably blow up. Okay. So, what can we see here? Or shall I? You have to look at this the other way up. You tilt your head to the side. I'm not going to attempt to do it because I might, the computer might spaz on me and I'll be doing a second part again. So as usual, you can see in the dark areas that the, the stuff is all joined, joined up. So, I don't know, there's a couple of, uh, so let's sort of say what you see, isn't it? It looks like a couple of tubes running side by side. Yeah. We'll just do this quickly and then we'll have a closer look of um, shore. It's in the southern hemisphere somewhere. Um, but it's interesting, so I just want to show you the makeup of the, the image itself. It's something which I've discovered, which I've noticed before. Um, it's 
So this is pulling the mid tones. So if you looked at this, the other, let's let's do it. Let's do it. Fingers crossed. Yay. Okay. Uh, where are they? There you go. Yeah. So you can only imagine that all these are doing that. I mean, look. Are all the same things. Now that's quite interesting. This is something I was going to show you on the other half of the um, Europa that I did. With the tubes and they look elevated, you can actually see the struts underneath and the shadows that they form. So either that's fake or it's one shadow here and then another shadow here. that area we looked at again. So like I said before, I will return to these places um, and uh, do more work on it so you can see it better. But I mean, that's that's just obviously what it looks like. craziness okay I could do a whole I mean there's all this as well to have a look at so anyway we're going to be uh, no we're not actually we're going to be looking at let's go straight to it going to be looking at this image um, just going to say what area it is so uh, it doesn't matter you can, you can read that and relate it to the globe um, but I should think it's southern um, Okay, and this is, oh no, it's the, an old camera that is. Okay, right, this is the original image. It looks weird anyway. Um, now, what I want to show you on this is the knot that you can see a lot of it here.
can start seeing. So I'll show you in this one, this hasn't been enlarged or anything. So you can see the, the pixels here, but over the top there's like, can you see these larger squares? Right. You can or can't. I will show you. Now there is there's some bits and bobs on here which you can see initially. I would look at this and this area. This area. They stick out to me. Okay. And uh, this is the one I've been working on. So let's get straight in here and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so this has had contrast and burning uh, done to it prior to me doing any other work on it. Now you can see these strips, these are sort of reminiscent. I'm not sure if they're strips or squares but I'll show you the pixel size can be different on here but this is my pixel size here and then over the top you can see the, the strips and that is something that the, in the old photograph this is how they'd be processed sort of spliced together type sort of thing I think but what what it does, and which I'll show you in the in the next image as well, they're slightly offset, so you can see. They're slightly offset and down. Now the next image as well is very, very interesting because within these squares, there's what people will call pixel compression or anomalies or it's weird, but to me it's just another way of diffusing the image making it harder to look at so just take a look at this I'm just going to point out we're going to have a look in here because I haven't had a look in here yet but you see this area here area here and here um, and I've started working here as well so they're totally in the dark totally in the dark so I'll just quickly pop back to here yeah check that check that and that's the area. So let's have a close look at that. Now what I had to do with this as well, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, after pulling in, pulling the information out of the, the, the shadow or the, the blackness. Um, I had to blur it. And let's go straight to it and see if I can demonstrate. That was slowly, slowly moving on. But let's have a look in here. So I'm going to make my brush bigger. I'm going to bump that right the way up. So we're on the, the normal setting. Now sometimes this can take a while. Sometimes there's find stuff sometimes you don't so I don't know what I'm going to find
There's definitely something in there. Now, what I did on the other bits, I had to do, because it was coming out right, sort of all chunky like that, was um, just blur it and try and fit it into the rest of the image. So it makes a bit more sense when you when you pan out. And of course you can uh, Dodge the highlight. Always around about seventy odd percent. So that's what was in the in the darkness. as was this. Okay, we're going to have a move around because it's quite... Um, you're probably thinking, what the hell am I looking at? So, just give you a chance to take it in. So you can see that the landscape is very much changing from this original. I put it there. We'll have a look like this and then we'll have a closer look. But look at this skyline.
Right, I'm going to try my pause button. I've got to have a... Arse is killing me. Okay, back. Just went out of coffee and... Let me bum and relax. Okay. This image really speaks for itself. Um, yeah. So let's do a little bit of work on it. So you can see these strips. And then slightly cut the image up. So we'll do a little bit of this and then we'll get into the into the last one. I have to show you more than one image of the same place. Um, it's essential, I think. I didn't need a lot more work doing on that. <clears throat> this is how the, the images vary so much. Um, within the same image, that is. Which says to me that... Different stages of um, editing been done. Sorry about that. I think you're getting the idea with this one.
In the next image I've done a little bit more work on it so hopefully it won't take too long to explain. what I've seen, or what, well, what you're going to see. So, from this, still looks cool this image. Look at this. The more you look at it, the more you see stuff here. A whole lot. It's nuts. Right, okay. So now th this was just a random one that I um it's a different uh instrument imaging instrument um, does it give a no it doesn't um it's a very low quality image so let's have a look at it. now remember those things i was talking to you about the those lines we could see so we're just going to get a bit closer Ooh so this is the raw image. Now, I'll show you in the next one quickly. But it's the same thing. But this is more like a grid work. And you can see these odd people call them anomalies or compressions, whatever, but um I'll show you in the next one exactly what I mean. But there are dozens of these images. And I didn't think there'd be any good to work on, but uh, they are. Okay, this is an enlarged image. So let's have another look up here. Now you can see the varying different squares let's get a bit closer I'll show you the pixel size this is the pixel size and then to me it looks like over the top there's another grid work and it within the grid work there's different formations running different directions of well, you can see them. What are they? Now, this reminded me of something I was looking at. I don't, cannot remember what it was. And I was saying, like, you know, like a fork had been dragged through it. Um, I'll show you. I'll show you in a second. 
so. Now you're saying, ah, blue. Now what you do, when these images come in, just show you, image, and you go to mode, and it comes in at grayscale. And if you want to do anything in color with a grayscale, you've got to change it to RGB. So go back to that one, and I'll show you the mode is RGB. And what you do from the black and white one, um, you need RGB to open all the color options. Um, in Photoshop, I think it's, uh, it's a color filter, but this is colorize. I'll just show you. Gives you the options to colorize the image. You can choose whatever color you want, obviously. Okay it, save it, etc, etc. I'll do a little tutorial on that. Okay. So I have enlarged this, actually it's not very big at all, I just wanted to keep it low because it was working for me, um, but I would have, you see that's 800, that's 900 megabyte, but you know anything up to 2, 3 gigabyte, you will obviously get more detail out of it. But in regards to these strange things. run through the whole image now I'm thinking that they it's a filter that they put over the top of the original image in regards to maybe what surface uh, what's happening on the surface in the original starting point from the original images and I and I'll show you what show you what I mean so if we get closer in here, let's see. Now you can see blurred areas and they're not so blurred areas. See the squares? go running through here so whatever those squares are going to hit are going to slightly distort what's underneath with the element of blurring you can see it here if I show you up here the darker areas are what have been blurred out as well But it's strange because there are features in here which I've pulled out which resemble, you see, resemble those squares with the, the different directional patterns. Where are we? Anyway, that's my little take on it. It's, um, it's unusual, I'm not entirely sure what is going on, but you can see the three dimensional element of these little areas. So I think they've applied a filter which breaks up um, what is happening on the, the real surface. tries to um, consolidate it more. What are we on? No, no, no. Okay. You 
can see these areas are very blurred. One of those little platform things here, it's something sticking out the top. I should give you a closer look. See? I can't remember where else I've, um, I've seen this style of image. You know, pause it, get used to it, and once you see it, um, wait, it's crazy. Very unusual. I mean, this is probably the most different we've seen so far in the way it actually looks, the the design of it. You can see the difference between. the quality of this and the quality of that. They're the same, it's just that these areas are blurred. And like I said before, if you work enough with the different elements, it will compress it. There's a lot going on in here. And that looks like one of the, can you see the squares, which is running through the whole image, there's another one there, but if I go into it, a bit messy let's um, apologies so let's just try with the the shadow you can see that port makes it a different color it's 
just an example. So, underneath there is stuff which is similar to the filter which they've put over the top <clears throat> to try and uniform um, uniform it, twist it up um, because there are similar anomalies underneath Um, which they probably were finding difficult to to cover up so I don't know but you can see how the three dimensions the more you work on the image come through it just an, an observation I had and I think uh, I need to know what they're doing. Oh, no wonder that's not working. What they're doing, because it, it hopefully it will better enable me to reveal this stuff. It's got a very prominent one, very unusual. So I think choosing any of these because there's loads of images like this um, so hopefully if you have a go um, it will make more sense of what you're actually looking at because you could get confused with these you see So you can see the individual squares. There's that pattern. There's that pattern. That one. And they're all random. And various ones are blurred out. I just think it's another way of diffusing the image. So I haven't done too much up here. Let's have a look here. And then guys, I think we will leave it at that. Lots of work to be done, but uh, obviously, completely covered in uh, very questionable 
anomalies. Mixed up with this grid work on the top of it. Interesting area. I'm not uncircling stuff, but it's. I might as well go like this. Craziness. And there you have it Pluto. say but okay guys I hope you enjoyed this um, yet another mind boggling planet um, be it a small one but um, thanks very much for watching um, leave your comments in the comments and uh, if you are sort of watching this secretly, don't be scared. Just get on with it. Okay. All right, guys, I will see you very soon. Okie doke.